right, welcome to Goon Squad's Decentralized News. We're going to cover this week's biggest stories affecting the crypto economy, plus Polygon meme coins. There's some serious alpha in there, so stay tuned. I am your host, Piter, joined as always by my northern Canadian Aussie par- counterpart, Ozzy. What's up, dude? I'm doing great, dude. I'm pumped. It's a little cold, but bit that Bitcoin fire is warming me up right now. It's hot inside, yeah. So huge, bro. So MicroStrategy, we're sitting here at 85K today. MicroStrategy bought another 27,000 Bitcoin today. We're in price discovery mode, 15K away from 100,000 Bitcoin, which, I mean, that's like easy to get to by the end of the year, maybe? Oh, I I think it could happen by the end of the month. If we keep the energy and the fuel that's been going on, I think... 15k bitcoin before black friday or or 15k more in bitcoin by the end of black friday i think that's possible we're i'm sure leverage is building up in the system as we speak and there'll be some pullbacks along the way it's not going to be up only it feels like it right now it's like christmas in crypto twitter right now we're seeing some come back from retail Google search trends, Bitcoin is going up. And I think the 100,000 Bitcoin will only drive that as another big catalyst to move it forward. Yeah, Coinbase has been climbing up the chart in the App Store. And anecdotally, one of my buddies, he's a Bitcoin Max, he has been received, I think, a half dozen or even a couple dozen requests from friends of how to buy Bitcoin just in the last week alone. So You want to give a brief on the Coinbase App Store? theory why people pay attention to that the coinbase app this app store theory is coinbase is like the biggest centralized exchange where you can buy bitcoin or crypto in the u.s and so if it climbs the chart it means more people are interested in buying bitcoin or buying crypto again and that means retails around retail traders usually start with coinbase in the u.s at least canada as well and eventually use it as a it's one of the many top signals if it's number one in the store yeah if it's number one for too long in the store then you probably know that you're reaching the top but it's climbing and that's actually yeah and then a little other tidbit of news just today recording on monday blackrock i saw from bitcoin archive post one billion in volume in 35 minutes today i was like oh man that is a big number their bitcoin etf flipped their gold etf last week yeah, just every day is a new, oh, they did uh, a billion in inflows in a day. Oh, they did this many billions of volume, and now it's like a billion in 35 minutes. Holy moly. Just to put it in perspective, how the excitement is palpable, and the reason why the U.S. markets are excited, Trump won. The news is, you know. Bullish for crypto. Cool. Yeah, but not only did he win, but Republicans swept gaining control of both the House and the Senate. And then uh, just a little bonus on top of that, seven out of the 10 gubernatorial races went Republican as well. And of the congressional races, Fox Business is reporting 250 of the 417 members of Congress, they get voted every two years, are considered pro-crypto. And this is after $250 million effort from the crypto industry. So we're talking about 60% of the House being pro-crypto. So this is pretty exciting times. I think a pro-crypto government in the U.S. is just going to add fuel to that fire. It's one of the biggest things that's been holding back the industry for the last year, really six months especially. And so to have a pro-crypto government will make a huge difference. Let's look at some of the Trump promises. You want to run through some of these? He made a bunch it all remains to be seen, but uh, yeah, shoots, bro. Yeah, let's go through a few of them. One of them is to free Ross, who he was the creator of the Silk Road. First kind of use case for Bitcoin. He promised to fire Gary Gensler. He has promised to create crypto-friendly regulation while also removing any stifling regulation. I think, I think this one is actually a, a big deal just because he has a history of cutting red tape. So I think this will come true. But anyway, sorry. He's talked about creating a strategic Bitcoin reserve. It's not necessarily a proposal to buy more Bitcoin, but it's to hodl all Bitcoin that was seized. That's still a significant amount of Bitcoin, and he wants to hodl it. So that's at least one less form of sell pressure that we can consider. 
if we think to earlier this year, Germany sold and that that hurt the market for a good few weeks, really, at the very least. So worth watching. He's also promised to prevent a CBDC. Some people have been very fearful about a CBDC and what that can mean for crypto. He's promised to pr uh, promote private custody and private mining rights. So if you're into mining or want self-custody, which Elizabeth Warren was very against, this is good. And he wants to encourage the U.S. Bitcoin mining industry. He wants all remaining Bitcoin to be made in the U.S., which is a funny line to have in the first place, but essentially want, wants Bitcoin mining to to really take off and dominate the industry. So His like understanding of it isn't as good as his instincts about it. I think he does get it that it is a coming wave, but yeah, it does show like his level of understanding of it, maybe. And then he has promised to form a U.S. Bitcoin mining industry council or advisory council around crypto, which uses insiders from the industry for advice within the first 100 days to help him make America the crypto capital of the world. Charles Hoskinson is rumored to be one of the people that could be on that panel. So if you've seen Ada pumping lately, that's probably why. Yeah, and I, I wanted to touch on one of these points. It was the one about the strategic reserve. There is also some excitement at the state level of states starting to put bills forward where they will start holding Bitcoin and having it as a reserve. So we may see some some exciting announcements around that. And it's it just makes me wonder if the United States could legitimately have Bitcoin as a reserve could even start to buy it, let's say over the next term, this next four years. It seems like other nation states should try and front run it and make maybe some more nimble nation states. I know it was just El Salvador for a long time, but I feel like those dominoes are just about to start falling. I, I think it would make a lot of sense to see other nations try and front run. Hong Kong has tried to front run the US on a couple things. They did it with the sole ETFs, I believe. So, the, and a little bit on the ETH ETFs. I think Hong Kong is drawing front run. We know Argentina has been in talks with El Salvador. There's been talks about South Africa, as well as some other countries within BRICS adopting crypto and Bitcoin in particular. So, I think the US could get front run. And I think the Bitcoin game theory that's been laid out by Michael Saylor and many others is really starting to play out you can see you can feel the excitement in the market it's very powerful yeah in the u.s we have to build consent consensus and it does move slow and the trajectory looks good but you can see it coming so maybe a more maybe an argument for centralized but anyway a, a smaller more nimble country that had a little bit more centralized control that can just make moves we might start seeing that yeah the other big updates that we want to bring is all about polygon memes polygon this is the goon squad section of the, the uh, show absolutely and i i think it's worth having in the show i genuinely believe that polygon meme season is right around the corner where they've got the ag summit going on right now and we'll be talking mm. about that more in in the speed run section but there's tons of meme coin news and if you're on Polygon crypto Twitter, the Sandeep has been retweeting about Polygon memes from various memes all week. They he started reposting about a week ago with one of my tweets, and then he's been reposting several others by a ton of other great crypto Twitter people. I know Caleb Denny got retweeted, our event of Anatis, I think Frontoza's been retweeted as well. We'll talk about him a little bit later. Huge shout out to all of them and shout out to <coughs> all of the Polygon memes out there. But let's let's dive into some news. We've had a pretty good week for graduated tokens with a nice weekend, especially for Goon, Tryon, and Gator uh, making some moves. The first Tryon, they've got their NFT mint on Friday the 15th. It takes, you need to hold 69,420 Tryon to have a chance to mint get in before the mint on friday their art is great but they're a really funny meme they got a they got a good meme going there's no doubt about it as far as just pure entertainment value pretty good 
If you want a purist meme, this is a purist meme right there. Jake and Ryan are both Polygon OGs, so huge shout out to them as well. The last I checked, Tryon was trading around a $220,000 market cap. Next down the list is Gator, which is the newest kid on the block. They launched their website this week, and they also just got added to Fetaswaps, which allows multi-chain buying of Gator from Seoul, BNB, Base, ETH, and a whole slew of others. So that's pretty big. Less than 200 holders, but they are competing with trying for market cap. Uh, I think right now they've just passed... Trying, I think they're sitting at a two hundred thirty or two hundred forty-five thousand. Yeah, looking at two forty-four versus two twenty-eight right now. So it's tight. It's still neck and neck, but Gator has taken ahead a little bit on on that race. Goon is continuing to be a huge leader in the space. Caleb Denny, who is the face of Goon in a lot of ways, although I contribute quite a bit, and Piter is an amazing community member. He got retweeted by Sandeep on a really good tweet about Polygon memes. Worth looking at that. There's a lot more. Yeah, I like how going. Gun's approach just in really from the beginning has been supportive of the whole Polygon meme space. It's the rising tide lifts us all. It really is. There's this untapped market that's just ready to blow up out here. And he's just really lived it. Absolutely. He's 100% embraced that that whole narrative and everything that's going on. And so what worth checking him out, worth supporting him and worth supporting Goon, because I do think that Goon will succeed if Caleb keeps at it and the rest of the community leaders at Goon keep at it. I think there's just, it will help rise all ships. Now you, these are all win marketplace ones. There's, one that's been building for a while on one marketplace got to 97% graduated. So this is like a pumped up fund, but this is spice and it's down it's probably 80 something, 90 I think right it's at now. 90% right now. Yeah. So it got back to 90 dumped a little bit, but they have a lot of building already done. They already have an NFT collection is an association with being built by little bow. So there's this NFT collection, a cute NFT collection, I, I would call it to describe it, but you can stake. You can buy the NFTs, 10 Matic. You can stake it for a wrap spice. So they just have a lot of this infrastructure built already. It didn't just come out of nowhere. I'm intrigued by that one. Yeah. Another one that's been like in in the ether a little bit is dead. They've been rumoring a launch for a while. They haven't dropped anything. They just started dropping some stuff again. So worth watching. Yeah. No, nobody knows about dead yet, but... They have a neat approach to it. It's been really cryptic, dropping clues. Like, what is going on with this one? The horror kind of theme, but pretty intriguing. I have to admit, I'm intrigued by it. Yeah. No, not financial advice. Please do your own yeah. research on that one. Yeah, high, high risk. But yeah, to check it out. You know, what's worth like looking at. It's interesting nonetheless. Yeah, and then yeah. on a non- when markets theme as well gone has absolutely come from nowhere they were they're a 10 month old meme coin on polygon they did a big airdrop to a bunch of ogs and they were sitting at like a 200k market cap not a lot of volume not a lot of didn't seem like there was a lot of life in them a week ago frontosa made a tweet and it reinvigorated the community they've you poked the bear yeah, he seemed to poke, wake the bear a little bit. And they have more or less 5x their market cap after, since that tweet. More, especially in the last few days, they're sitting at a $915,000 market cap today, just now. But they tapped over 1.1, 1.2. Worth watching to see what, what happens with Gone. They've really come back from the dead in some ways. Although I think they, that might that reference might upset them. Bitcoin is also up 7%. They've had a good couple of days, so worth checking them out. If you're looking at other meme coins in the Polygon space, obviously Polydoge, largest meme coin on Polygon, and then Dads. Dads is also out there, and a huge shout out to both Polydoge and Dads. Their founders have been incredibly supportive of all memes on the chain, and so 
a huge shout out to Guth and Jordan. Massive appreciation for both of them in that space. Make Polygon great. They're having their big summit that finishes up today. They've been talking about this ag layer with the new poll token that's been the theme. We're going to have this new ag layer, but I guess it's going to be going... So let's see, the version of Aglayer that supports connecting to any EVM chain will be live in early September. So it hasn't early been Early December, op- December. Sorry, early December. It hasn't been fully operational. It's, so we'll maybe get to see it in, its, in one of its closer to final forms. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is pretty big. They also announced that there's going to be a yield-bearing stablecoin that is going to be operating as the Aglayer stablecoin. So huge shout out for that. That's pretty interesting to see. And looking forward to more news there. The The Aglayer and Polygon has some massive things. They've got Reddit. They've got uh, Wilder World. They've got Moonvale. They've got, they were the home of Starbucks. So there's just more and more bullish things coming for Polygon, and so I'm incredibly excited for that. Yeah, not even mentioning Polymarket, which was the big news last week. <laughs> but we'll see. It's not going anywhere. It'll be back whenever there's big things going on in society. Oh, but, um, even they're, they're even taking on the sports betting market, and I think that's going to be huge. So they handled the election volume amazingly well. Huge right. shout out to, to Polygon and like Polymarkets for that. Stress test past XP points game. Yeah. All right. Let's dig into the speed run a little further. We had an Algorand sighting. Hasn't really come back from the previous cycle. And I haven't really seen a lot of news out of them, but they have announced staking rewards. You do need 30,000 Algo to stake, which is around $4,300, $5,000 almost. But an Algorand sighting in the speed run today. The other one that we're citing is BNB. They've they've been fairly quiet, although not gone, but definitely fairly got quiet. And they're introducing one-stop tokenization to allow the tokenization of assets requiring no code and making them RWA that are tradable tokens on B and compliant with local regulation. Pretty interesting. We'll probably see more about this soon. And the final piece in the speed run is OpenSea. They've introduced, they're planning to introduce XP points in the new update coming in December. Probably looking to compete with Magic Eden's Diamonds. We'll see what that's like. They're trying to compete. Does, is this a hint at an airdrop? Probably. There's currently a waitlist open, so keep your eye open for that. And a final little story for all of you watching the show, the macro. Where I think it's the one remaining thing maybe holding back the market. We did have a rate cut two days after the election, 25 basis points as expected. The market, but it was a bit more bearish than it was bullish, seemed a little more uncertain about a cut in December. And they did not end quantitative tightening. Quantitative tightening means they are not buying any securities or they're actively unloading securities necessarily from their from their balance sheet. Worth watching for that to change. Maybe that changes in December on the 18th during that meeting. There's currently 65% chance of a cut in December and a 35% chance of no cut. We'll see what hmm. that means, especially as they keep their eye on inflation data. They were concerned about inflation. So worth watching and please consider liking and subscribing. This is not financial advice, and please do your own research on anything we talk about. But thank you for tuning into Goon Squad Presents Decentralized News. Good week, everybody. Cheers.